Now let's get some insights in the news shaping the markets for that. We welcome in Peter Tuckman is here, Senior <laughs> Equity Floor Broker at Trade Moss. Hi, guys. Uh, amazing, right? We're, look at the, I can't get over gold and, and the Russell. And the Russell. Let's talk about it. You know what? I mean, look, what's going on here? This is a huge day. So, look, it's, we've had a number of days back to back where the market is still waiting on some catalyst on the upside or the downside. We've been sort of trending just flat overall, right? And so after a while, the market really, either the market is going to react and just break out on, on just an op in somebody's opinion or a sector's opinion, right. or they're going to just look for where there's value. Right. And small cap and mid cap is obviously the choice of the day. I love looking at what the market's doing rather than having an opinion and analyzing right. the information because the, right. the information, there's so much of it. And the analysis of it, whether it's PPI, CPI, CP, it's so confusing in so many different ways. Good news is bad news. That kind of is questionable. But where to see people, the big guys are putting their money, what's moving the market? And today to see uh, gold, right, which is a great safe haven in so many different ways. Obviously, we're seeing a bit of a shift where gold is going up and Bitcoin's coming down. That's a new right. new paradox right there. But you're seeing the uh, the Russell going up, and that's look whether they're buying uh, a lot of the tech names that are in the small and mid cap Russell or what. But obviously that three well, and a half percent is, move there is a big is a is a big move. Tech is a dud today as a as a sector. I mean, yeah. it's the worst sector. Real yeah. estate, no surprise to you, is a winner. Yeah. And you know, as rates are coming down, yields are coming down. We're seeing real estate as the best performing, mm -hmm. up two and a half percent. Let's go back a little bit and talk about inflation. So we see inflation a little softer print on CPI than what was expected, right. showing it's moderating just what the Fed wants. What did you think of what you read throughout this morning? You know what? I, I'm still having, you know, I, 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 we, week after week we're getting this information. It's already, it's just got my, my head spinning because I'm just not, there's no clarity in it. It's just, it's almost that they're flip-flopping in the way they analyze the information. I kind of just not even address it in so many ways because it's just the, the fine, the numbers are so fine and the reaction, I'm more interested in how the market's reacting to it. And the market has not reacted to anything. We had Jay Powell speaking a couple days ago or in the press conference. Nothing really was said of any consequence, at least not enough to make the market move at all. I've right. never seen him speak for two and a half hours and the market basically for two days. Tra and traded flat. There was absolutely right. no reaction to it. So what does that mean? That means people are sitting on the sidelines trying to figure out where to go, where to put money. We're into the second half of the year, right? We had a great first half. That's good. But we do are we are wondering where is when is the cut going to happen if we are going to have one? It kind of feels that way. One seems to be pricing in here, whether it's September or it's December. That's where what people are trying to analyze within that report things that you know car used cars new cars came down a little bit food especially food out at restaurants you know Susie Orman told us she doesn't go out to a restaurant ever I even invited her out and she said no she said, I'm not paying for food out, and I certainly wouldn't want you to spend your money, Nicole, out. <laughs> uh, you know, people don't want to go out. It's still very costly. So we still have inflation. Uh, but does this give the Fed the go-ahead for, what, a move in September? In September or December. You know what? I, I, whether they, they do have enough economic data to make that move or there's just this overriding pressure. Right. We saw them cut in Europe. We saw that the market feels like it's the expectations are that they are going to cut. Right. And I think that's what people are waiting for. It's just sort of it's like you watch it. Look, as a day trader, you watch the trend. Right. Some people will trade. A, there's a thing called a trend trade. A trend yeah. trade is when yeah. the market's trading flat and then the market either spikes up or spikes down. Some people tend to wait for the move, wait for the green bar or the red bar. It's really, you know, I have a partner named David Green. He used to be a market maker here. And we have this academy called Wall Street Global Trading Academy. One of the great trades that you do is when the market is flatlining and you don't, don't get yourself wrapped up in an opinion. You wait for the market to tell you what the next move is going to be. And that's where we are. We're sitting at the crossroads okay, where, where everybody so is waiting. They don't want to be the first advice, one to pull the trigger. What's your advice to investors? Because look at how the likelihood of rate hikes 
has changed in the okay, last September 20 years. Okay, September is 89%. September is now 89%. November 95, December 99. I mean, the September number yesterday was more like 75%. Okay. It was 75.2 yesterday. <laughs> so it shows the big change in I'm mentality. Not sure How about it's ex I'm not sure if it's expectation. No. I'm not sure if it's expectation or the fact that they really want this, right? We don't, the, the, everybody's fear is that we're gonna stay higher for longer, right? right? That's the claim. Yeah. And they don't want that. And it's starting to eat away at obviously so many things in the inflation story. So that feels to me like it's just people are hoping that we do get a cut. What is that, 89%? They're not uh, hoping, they're actually betting on it. Yeah, they're betting on it. Um, let's talk also about what you advise to investors at this point. Well, you know, look, you know I can't advise anything to investors, right. but I kind Are of Are you think, feeling more bullish, more bearish? You know what? The Risk market on. is telling me that uh, that it, it, there's a bullish sentiment going on, but I th still think there's, we're, we're at a wait and see mode, right? We are now, we've spent probably about a month, you know, we, uh, uh, edging on, on, on the bullish side, right? If the, if the Look, if the people who are a lot smarter than me, who are running big money, really wanted to felt that this was a selling opportunity, they'd right. be selling into this strength in a big way, but they're not. Right? There's no aggressive selling going on. At least it doesn't feel that way to me. And so I think we are still in a wait and see situation. Some, look, at this point, when it happens for this long a period of time, something's going to, uh, some shoe is going to drop. What do you tell folks about MAG7? You know what? It is still an extraordinary sector. You know, people who I speak to about it feel that this is, an, this is not a bubble by any means. It is a long, strong story, that it is a revolution, that AI is here to stay, that NVIDIA is best to breed, but that you're starting to see it affect some of the other, the secondary and tertiary derivatives of that, like Microsoft, Intel, Google, Amazon. It's starting to affect their stocks in a positive way. So it's a great story. All right. Thank you so much, Peter My Tuckman pleasure. of Trade Moss. Thank you so much. Great to see you, <laughs> to see as, you as always, well. Peter, Happy on, summer, a, on a big day. And claims, by the way, folks, 222 came in a little less than what was estimated. Peter Tuckman, thank you.